Hey there, welcome to my series, Microsoft Visio for Azure Architecture Diagramming. The name of this lesson is Using Layers, and my name is Tim Warner. All right, here's the problem that we'll solve today. You're working in Microsoft Visio to develop, say, an Azure Virtual Network Diagram. So you can see here I've brought in appropriate shapes. If you're wondering how you get the Azure shapes, look for the first installment of this series in my YouTube channel because I give you all the heads up on that. But once you get rolling, you'll find that once you lay down the basic shapes, like the virtual network shape, and I've created some shapes for subnets, and I've overlaid those with network security group, you can start to work with grouping. As a matter of fact, when I click the NSG, notice it selects both of these shapes. If I right click and come down to group, ungroup, I can separate those shapes, which could be a blessing or a curse. What I'm rolling around to say is that as you start adding, say, virtual machine icons into this diagram, it can be too easy to have something like this happen, where an element that you wanted to stay put winds up moving. And we can always use Control Z to undo, but layers form a really nice layer of protection, pun intended, against these kinds of changes. And they're pretty easy to implement, so let me walk you through it right now. I'm just in Visio 2019, but the layers functionality has been in Visio since I started, and I've been using the tool over 20 years. So it's not a version-dependent feature. What we can do is open the ribbon, and on the Home tab, we can come all the way over to Editing, Layers, Layer Properties. I'm going to create one layer for the network. Let's click New in the Layer Properties dialog, and I'll call this Network. And I'll create a second layer, and I'm going to click New and call this Resources. Just hang with me here. I'll talk about what each of these properties means momentarily. For now, you can look at these like sheets of overhead transparency paper. I don't know, I'm dating myself by saying that. I don't know if you can relate to that concept of putting clear sheets of plastic one on top of the other in layers. And any drawing that you have on a lower layer would be added to by adding additional sheets on top of the pile. But the, the lower level layers, boy, say that five times quickly, will be protected against modification. I'll show you how that works now. We've got these two layers defined. What we can do next is assign shapes to those layers. I'm going to double left click my home tab to collapse the ribbon. I'm not working with the highest resolution here. And I'm going to select the appropriate shapes that I want to include in my network base layer. So I'll click the virtual network and then hold down the control key while I click subsequent shapes. I'll include these subnets. I separated this NSG at the data tier, so I need to make sure to do that. Again, I'm holding down control and I'm left clicking all the shapes until I get everything together. Now you might have asked, well, why don't you just use drag and drop to draw a selection rectangle? Well, the reason for that is that I don't, in this case, want to include my app gateway. So in order to do precise multi-selection, I'm using control. Now what we can do is come back to the ribbon, back all the way to layers, and this time choose assign to layer. And I'm going to assign these shapes to the network layer as shown here. So far, so good. Now we have our resources that will be on top of that base layer. I'm going to go ahead and assign all of those. I will left mouse drag a selection rectangle around these six virtual machines. And now I'll hold down control and bring in the rest of these shapes by clicking them one at a time. Again, we'll come back to home, layers, assign to layer, and this time I'll choose resources. Okay, now the great benefit to this now is that we can do things like showing and hide layers, and we can also lock layers. If we're satisfied with the arrangement of my virtual network, and we want to make sure that we don't inadvertently drag and drop like I just did there, I'll do Control Z to undo that. We can again return back to the layers command. We'll go to layer properties, and for the network layer, I'm just going to simply tick lock. Watch what happens when I click OK. Now if I come back and try to select or drag and drop any of those network shapes, it's just never going to happen. Now I can still move my app gateway, Control z to undo, because we know that those are in the foreground. It's like you have two sheets of transparency paper. On the bottom you have the virtual network, and then on top you have the rest of these shapes that I'm now free to move wherever I need to in the diagram. Now, I'm not going to make this the prettiest diagram. Of course, normally I'd be concerned with aligning and distribution and all that stuff. I'm just trying to get the point across as quickly as I can right now. 
I'm actually going to delete those arrows just to make things easier. Now, as you're working along, maybe you want to come back and work on just part of the diagram and you're getting a bit confused by all of the different shapes. In other words, what if we needed to draw routing path arrows within this virtual network or some other? I'm just trying to think off the top of my head some examples. You can clear the decks, as it were, by coming back again to that Layer Properties dialog box and then choosing the Visible property. So, for example, if we wanted to work only on the virtual network again, we might want to unlock the virtual network and then toggle visible for resources. You see, now watch what happens when I click OK. Visio didn't destroy those shapes. It simply hid them from view. This accomplished two things for us. Number one, it makes me realize that I need to include public IP and app gateway back into the appropriate layer because I must have missed them the first time through. I can easily handle that by coming back to assign to layer and I'm going to make these guys part of resources and click OK. And of course, I'm hiding the resources layer so those shapes are hidden. And now I'm free to make any modifications to this network that I want to. I can shorten up these subnets and again forgive any misalignment the point here isn't to make the diagram pretty i'm just doing a proof of concept here and then once again yet we can come back to layers layer properties and we can relock the network layer and make sure that our resources are now visible you see let me click ok and we're back in business now one hazard to be concerned with once you start using layers and you're certainly not limited to two layers Maybe I would do a VNet peering and do another virtual network and put that entire thing on another layer or more than one layer. And then in the future, if I'm just concentrating on the peered network, I might hide the main one. You can go in all sorts of creative directions with layers, but be careful about deleting layers. I'll show you that right now to finish this demo out. We'll come back to layers one more time, layer properties. And if I select, let's say, the resources role, and click remove. Notice it says removing this layer will delete all shapes belonging to it. Remove the layer. Be very careful about that because like I said, if you click yes and click OK, the layer and the appropriate shapes or the associated shapes, I should say, are gone. The good news is that a simple control Z or a tap of the undo button up here will bring back that. But you certainly want to be aware of that going forward. If you want to get rid of layers but preserve the shapes, what we'll want to do there is select the shapes in question, like in this case, the shapes that were part of my resources group, my app gateway, the labels, the public IP address. And we'll come back to layers, assign to layer, and we'll just say no layer. You see what I mean? I just unticked that. And so this means now, if I decide to delete that empty layer, resources, let me go to remove. I'll click yes to confirm and click OK that the layer is now gone, but my shapes are preserved. For learning resources, I want to make sure you know where to go for further information, particularly Azure Reference Diagrams and the Microsoft Azure Architecture Center. If you go to timw.info forward slash rd, you can look up various network topologies that denote proven practices. And what's cool is that not all, but many of these reference diagrams include direct download links for Visio files. So these Visio files can serve as a springboard for your own reference diagrams. Also, if you're looking for just general documentation on layers, look in the Microsoft Visio online docs, timw.info forward slash vy. Thank you so much for joining me. I enjoy teaching Visio very much, and I hope you're getting a lot out of the training. You can find me on Twitter at Tech Trainer Tim. My plural site library is at timw.info forward slash ps, and my website is techtrainertim.com. Take care.